A Rams official assures season ticket holders the team can win the NFC West. The Dodgers polish off their pitching staff and Tyron Lue's job security with the Clippers is in question. Good morning, I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. So it is March 25th, 2023. It is Galaxy Game Day. I am in Portland and I am about to head out to Providence Park to watch perhaps the worst MLS game in the last five years. I'm very excited about that. Pumped even. And if you like the content that we uh, put out about LA Sports, click and clack the like button. Click and clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Hit that. It'll let you know when we drop new content. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. Because I'm going to be pretty drunk in a little bit. So before we go through the news and the notes from around LA, let's take a quick look at the scoreboard. Anthony Davis scored 37 points and added 14 rebounds for the Lakers, who finally hit the 500 mark, 116-111 over the Oklahoma City Thunder. 500. Took them 74 games to do it after starting the year 2-10, and 10, but they finally did it. Achieving mediocrity. Hell yeah. Now, they leaped over Oklahoma City with the win. They're currently eighth in the Western Conference, but they are one and a half games behind Golden State for the sixth spot. So there's still a shot that they can uh, make their way above the play-in tournament. Meanwhile, today, pretty good day. We have New Orleans playing the Clippers at 7.30. The Clippers have moved up to fourth in the Western Conference. Winnipeg is at the Kings. That is at 1 o'clock. Uh, for the Kings, it's their first game in damn near a week. And in the process of getting their rest, they've basically fallen four points behind the Vegas Golden Knights. Mentioned earlier that the Galaxy are at Portland. That game is at 1.30. I believe it's one of the national games, like on Fox. Fun stuff. No Chicharito. No Dejan Jovalik. So we are looking at the third string striker, Preston Judd. Judd Galo's Unite. I'm pumped, like I said. Don't, get even, don't even get me started on the players that Portland isn't going to have today. FC Dallas is at LAFC at 7.30. And the, uh, the, uh, there are stories circulating of a player from Leeds of the Premier League that might be coming to LAFC. The reason I'm not telling you the player's name, the reason I'm not hyping this yet, is because all of the stories are in the foreign press, and the foreign press is patently unreliable when it comes to player transfers. If, in fact, it does come down that he joins Leeds, we'll chat then. But let's start off with the Rams. COO, Chief Operating Officer, Kevin Damoff sent a letter to season ticket holders trying to explain the remodel. You know, guys, guys, I realize it looks glum, but patience, we have a long-term plan. Oh, wait, he didn't say that at all. He said that the goal was, quote, to win the NFC West and make a deep playoff run. Change doesn't mean that we, ha that we expect to take a step back, unquote. I tried really hard yesterday trying to find the word liar in COO, but that's apparently what we have. Can I be real with you? I mean, sometimes I glance over a headline. The headline was, Demoff sends a letter to season ticket holders, and I'm not feeling it. I don't want to click the link. I'm super glad I did, because come on. The Rams are competing for the NFC West? Really? I mean, it was, it was so... That lie was so absurd that I can't even be angry about it. It was that ridiculous. I mean, not since Baghdad Bob have I ever seen a lie that deep, profound, and sold with such conviction. Not since Larry King, 150-year-old Larry King in the waning moments of his life, still bragged that he didn't need Viagra. 
Not since every girl I knew in high school said, I'm sure we can still be friends. I have not seen a lie told with such deep and, and I've never seen a lie sold to me like that. Let's take a moment. And by the way, for those of you who are new to the program, I am a Rams fan. I love I I love a lot of things about the Rams coming back. Sean McVay, uh, the way that they run their offense. I loved uh, I loved what they did with the when Jalen Ramsey was the quote star on defense, and not star in the ooh let's get his autograph. It was a specific position. They they thought outside the box. They were innovative on offense and defense. They had star power. But let's take a moment and look at the Rams defense. They let Bobby Wagner go. They traded Jalen Ramsey. They let Greg Gaines go. Ashawn Robinson is probably out the door as well. That are those are all major losses in terms of stopping the run at all three levels of the defense: defensive line, linebacker, cor uh, defensive back. The only team in the NFC West that does not run the football is Arizona, right? The 49ers run. So do the Seahawks. For that matter, so do the Eagles, Browns, Cowboys, and Ravens. That is eight games where the team runs the football. And if the game kicked off in about five minutes, as long as you didn't run right at Aaron Donald, you could just basically, you could basically do the achy, breaky heart all the way into the end zone, up the sideline. That's the way the Rams' defense looks right now. We have to be honest with ourselves about that. L.A. is going to get trampled. I bring no joy to that. But here's the thing. It's a long-term plan. They're getting so far under the salary cap and getting all these draft picks so they can make a quick push, a quick turnaround, and take advantage of the twilight of Matthew Stafford and Aaron Donald and Cooper Cup's careers, which makes sense to me. But don't tell me that they're competing for the NFC West now. It, Baghdad, Kevin, it doesn't work. Now, meanwhile, the Rams aren't losing everybody. Center Brian Allen has reworked his contract to save the team another $3.2 million under the cap. Um, the bottom line is, you add that, they're probably looking at about having $12 million under the cap now which is good to make sure they get all their draft picks signed because they have 11 of them. Like I said, this is what they refer to as a remodel. We can call it a rebuild, whatever the hell you want. You're not competing for the NFC West this year. I, I would be stunned. I would be stunned. No bigger of an upset would the Rams win the NFC West? The only bigger upset I can think of is me marrying my wife who happens to be 21 years younger than me. That's the big upset. The Dodgers have made a few more roster moves yesterday and it all went to clarify the pitching staff. The position players were all clarified yesterday. Now, the first thing you should know is that Ryan Pepio becomes the fifth starter, replacing the injured Tony Gonzalez. We'll talk a little bit more about him in, a, in just a half second. The rotation, chock full of surprises. We knew Julio Arias should have been the opening day starter. He is. But he's followed by Dustin May, not Clayton Kershaw. Kershaw, the surefire Hall of Famer, is technically the third best pitcher in the Dodgers staff, followed by Noah Syndergaard and then Pepio. Now, Pepio is typically LA's first choice whenever a starter went down with injury. Spot starts, you know, maybe tweaked something, needed a day of rest. Pepio got a lot of frequent flyer mile, miles between Oklahoma City and LA. As a result, Michael Grove got sent down to the minors, and so did left handed relief pitcher Victor Gonzalez. Uh, for Gonzalez, what we can tell you, he's throwing off of a mound again. He's testing the ankle that he turned a couple of weeks ago. The hope among the Dodgers is that he returns in mid-April. A scribe for Yahoo went on a podcast that I don't listen to and said, quote, there has been chatter, unquote, of Tyron Liu leaving his coaching position with the Clippers. He's in his third year with the team. It is the fourth of the Kawhi Leonard-Paul George union, if you will. 
the era of iffiness because this idea was they were supposed to win championships. The furthest said gone is the conference finals. Lou has a five-year contract. And so the chatter basically is, goes one of two ways. Is Lou, have, is Lou burning out? Or do the Clippers believe that maybe we've given this guy the bulk of the Kawhi Leonard, uh, Paul George thing, and he hasn't produced the right result? Now, to be clear, the Clippers and Lou rushed to another sports writer who went to a different podcast and said, no, 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 no. Lou's job isn't in jeopardy. Lou hasn't considered leaving, so there's not going to be a firing. There's nobody going to be quitting. I'm going to be honest with you. I have no idea who to believe. None. Because all I can say is with the Clippers, while they don't have the success that they wanted to have, Obviously, they have an owner who is willing to cut fat checks to lead a spiffy team into that brand new arena that's just now a little south of SoFi Stadium, and it's going to open in 2024. These guys were supposed to be title contenders. I can't stress that enough. Last year, they didn't even make the playoffs. So, is Lou tired of it? Is Lou not the man to lead the way? I have no idea. Paul George, by the way, is not expected to need surgery for his injured knee. ESPN uh, reports that the knee is sprained, that there weren't any torn ligaments. And that, honestly, is a great thing. Because Kawhi Leonard, when he's not doing his load management crap, Paul George, everything fell on his shoulders. And for the most part, honestly, for the Clippers, he answered the demand. He was terrific when Kawhi wanted to take a break to sit on the sideline and eat some apples. I have a question for you. I'm not trying to advance an agenda. It's an honest question. Love to hear your opinion. If you're a UCLA basketball fan or a USC basketball fan, now look, nobody outside the walls of a crack house thinks that UCLA is kaput as a program. They have a great recruiting class coming in. Mick Cronin has absolutely established a legit, uh, a legit program or re-established a legit program with the Bruins. But they lose Jaime Jaquez Jr. They lose Tiger Campbell, possibly Amari Bailey. Could USC be the better team next year? I mean, there's a lot of ifs involved. A lot of ifs. But the Trojans are adding one of the top recruits in the nation in point guard Isaiah Collier. They didn't have a point guard last year. Andy Enfield loves traditional point guards. They already have a couple of bigs that they like in Vince Iwuchukwu and Joshua Morgan. So they could have that inside-out game. Could they be better than the Bruins? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Do you remember DJ Fluker? He was a former first round pick out of Alabama, an offensive lineman who, uh, you know, he, he tried his best when nobody went out to see the Chargers out in San Diego. You know, when you could hear your echo bounce at your, your, Whatever the hell they... When, when San Diego Superchargers was echoing around Qualcomm Stadium, and it was echoing because there was nobody in the stands, DJ Fluker was trying his best for the Chargers back then. Well, he's 32. He's been out of the league since 2020. And he's in the gym, flexing. And let me tell you something. He's flexing a lot of arm. He's 330 pounds, and it looks like it's all muscle. The guy showed up at Alabama's Pro Day. Now, that doesn't mean he's automatically asking the Chargers for a contract, but obviously the man is making a comeback. So just saying, you got to like a guy who takes a second shot at his dream job. Because it's never too early to start drama, ESPN has asked about what are the biggest off-season questions for each NHL team. Keep in mind, season's nowhere near over yet. We haven't even started the Stanley Cup playoffs, and they're already starting to stir up the who has the biggest off-season need question. 
Now, they did ask it for the Kings. L.A., they say, has two off-season questions to answer. One, Gabe Velarde is a restricted free agent, and he's having a career best season. What does it cost to keep Gabe Velarde? Number two, is Eunice Corposalo okay being in a goaltending tandem with Phoenix Copley? Because they're both playing well, but who do you call the number one? And if you don't call them the number one, you're kind of inclined to want to keep both. We mentioned earlier about all the uh, people that will not be playing for the Galaxy today. Boy, I love the fact that my voice is cracking. I got a little bit of Bobby Brady uh, going on in my voice right now. The Galaxy are also playing a backup goalie today, Jonathan Klinsman. The reason I bring that up is because with only one goalie, you better hope that that guy doesn't get hurt on the AstroTurf. So the Galaxy have signed goalie Aaron Cervantes from LA Galaxy 2 to back up Klinsman. You might recall that uh, Jonathan Bond is probably missing a month due to a shoulder injury suffered in last week's game. Would you let me know what you think in the comments thread? Let me know what you think about the Rams' chances to win the NFC West or the Dodgers' rotation. And if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We are talking LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back later today with a rapid recap of the Galaxy Timbers match. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corte El Queso production. Take care.